morning, everybody, and welcome to Bacon and Coffee. And I'm so glad you're here. If you have any um, info you'd like to share, please put it in the chat window for us as we go along. Put your questions in and uh, let us know you're here. Let us know what you're thinking. And I'm really excited about our guest today, which is Jeff Herring for the second time, a repeat guest. But before we get started, let's do our 30 second countdown and then we have to do our theme song. So here we go. And can't forget. All right, welcome everybody to Bacon and Coffee. We have our one of our favorite guests on, Mr. Jeff Herring, coming to us from Georgia. Where in Georgia are you again? You're not by Atlanta. You well, you know where Atlanta is, right? Yeah, head forty miles north. Okay, north northeast, and so it's far enough away to be away from the craziness, mm -hmm. um, but close enough to go to a concert or a show or a ball game. And we're right here in the foothills of the North Georgia mountains. I am. Looking out my window at uh, Lake Lanier right now. So wow, it's a uh, it's a good place to be. It's a beautiful thing. So how are you this? I'm week? doing well. I really like your intro. Thank you, um, sir. Did you ever um, watch Craig Ferguson and Late Night back when he was on? No. Funniest, funny. Johnny Carson's better as that role, but he's mm -hmm. the funniest one ever. If you ever want to have a good laugh, watch. There's a 45 minute clip of the three or four times Robin Williams was on with him. Oh, I can imagine. And it's, it's just hysterical. <laughs> but when Twitter first came out, he would do these um, Twitter jingles and videos, kind of like your bacon. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the most famous line I remember from it would be, uh, tweets will set you free. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll put you in jail, one or the other. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Depending on what you tweet. Right, exactly. So how are you, my friend? What's happening? I'm doing in good. I'm doing good. I'm a brand new grandfather. That's awesome. Congratulations. Bodie was born, I can't believe it, two weeks ago now. Two weeks ago. Wow. Thursday. And uh, he's already an overachiever. He was supposed to gain 10 ounces between the last hospital visit and... Um, and their two week checkup, and he gained eighteen ounces. So, you know, wow, go kid, likes it. kid likes his milk. Gotta like that. <laughs> That's, for sure. That's for sure. So today we're going to be talking about content creation, which is our theme for today: content creation, content repurposing, those kind of things. So, Yay. so I've once you tell stuff. everybody who's never met you before to kind of tell a little bit about your background, what you did, how you went from being a psychologist to pe psyching people on the internet. <laughs> no one's ever said it that way before. I like that. <laughs> you know, and it's something I never expected to do, Brian. I figured I'd, you know, live and die in Tallahassee and do the counseling practice uh, for the rest of my life. But um, in 94, to promote the practice, I started writing a relationship column for the local paper. Mm -hmm. It was really funny because I never finished my PhD because my professors told me I couldn't write and I believed them. Um, and then um, the column took off and I started teaching that online and a couple, three years later, one of those professors, Dr. Mary Hicks, uh, told me I couldn't write, joined one of my content creation workshops, which was kind of fun. Um, and so that was a, tr that was a transition I did not expect, mm -hmm. um, but it just made sense to, to head in that direction. And, you know, I'm still using all the psychology stuff every day and helping people get unstuck and get further down the road with their business and building what I build is all based on really, really good sound psychological principles. So it's still there. I just don't, um, I just don't ever ask anybody how they feel about that. <laughs> well, how does that make you feel? <laughs> you know what? In, in 25 years of doing it, I never said that. That's never good. Once said that everybody thinks that, that you say that all the time, but my favorite, my favorite thing was when people would ask, how do you listen to people all day? And I'd say, who listens? 
and they'd they'd look at me funny like is he serious you know so mm -hmm. so we already got a comment on uh on facebook and it's from phil hotkin um hotshin and uh he says my cousin lives in cumming georgia there you go yeah we're probably neighbors uh georgia 400 comes out of atlanta mm -hmm. and people that live off of 400 identify each other by what exit they live off of ah like i'm off of um exit 15 so phil's um uh, is it brother you said uh he said his cousin his cousin probably lives off of 12 13 14 15 16 or 17. somewhere in that range yeah yeah and even 18 will take you to north coming so hmm that's yeah. a lot of exits it is <laughs> and it's a lot of people it makes me very very glad that I work from home. One day a week, I drive down into um, into a couple exits down for our men's group, and I think there's people that do this twice a day. Oh yeah, every day. Thank oh, you yeah. God. Thank you God. And you're doing it on a Sunday, right? Or are you doing it at night? Doing what? The men's group. Uh Friday morning. Friday morning. Okay. Friday so Friday you morning. so you're yeah. going in traffic time. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. We start at seven, so I leave about um, about you know, 20 of, and, and I'm, I'm back here by nine. So I mm -hmm. only get one little dose of it, but still. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I, I do not like is spending time in traffic. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's tough. It's a big waste of time, but anyways, we're, not, we're here to talk about traffic, but not that kind of traffic. We're that, here about but, but driving traffic done. to your Ooh. website. Oh, thank you. You, you yeah. went to Segway school. I can tell. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I could never drive one of those things though, man. They're a little no, unstable. I, Looks like a good way to get hurt. Yes, it is. I but use uh, the skateboard and surf, but that looks like a good way to get hurt. Yeah, I, I'm amazed I didn't kill myself on a skateboard when I was a little kid. You know, no helmets, none of that stuff. But yeah, you know, we also drove in the back of cars. You know, without any seat belts and stuff. That's like true. That. I'm, 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 I'm surprised I didn't die on my, my Stingray bicycle, mm -hmm. my Stingray with the white banana seat and the, the roll bar that went up in the back. Oh yeah, I remember those. Yes, in Kansas, my across the street neighbor, their their yard went like this and then down. Mm -hmm. okay? So at 11, 12 years old, we thought it was brilliant to build a ramp right there at the edge of that drop, mm -hmm. come down the hill, barreling on our bikes and launch. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. We had uh, when I lived in New York, we had the same thing. We had a hill at the top that went down like this. And then flattened out for the house. And then we had yep. a gully down below that went out. <laughs> you know, so it's like it was we would uh, toboggan down it all the time, you know, and try to make it to the gully. And when you hit the gully, the snow was flat and you yeah. hit it, you'd go down. And I remember one time my dog, uh, Sean at the time, she went out and the snow was up to her belly and she hopped and she hopped and she hopped and she was gone. <laughs> she oh hit, how scary yeah she hit the she hit the gully and she had no idea and the you know, next thing you know she's looking up from this you know we had to go down and dig her out so hello yeah so you've always been a dog man oh yeah always yeah since i was a little kid so but anyways let's talk some content man absolutely so, absolutely so in you know the bottom line is and I'm a, I'm a firm believer. You, you were one of the people that taught me about content creation. I mean, I, you know, obviously I created books and you know, that that's where I started. It's like, I, I had a website, I was doing a blog, but I didn't right. know what to do with this stuff, you know, and, and how to repurpose it. And now right. it is, don't. yeah. And now it's something that is so innate in what I do. It's like immediately when I create something, I'm thinking, okay, where else can I use this? Yeah, and actually this even group? before, before I create something, I'm thinking about, okay, what is, yes, what is all of the manipulations that you could do with this stuff? So tell us a little bit how you kind of started down that road and what you've been doing with it. That's a really good question, Brian. And it, and it started back when um, I was a counseling psychologist and every principle I'm about to share works and worked for me offline. Every principle I'm about to share works about a thousand times better online because of our reach. So Monday morning, the column would come out in the paper, right? right? Front page of the health section. It was fun to walk out in my driveway and go, I know that guy. Um, and I would cut it out of the paper, uh, make copies of it. That went to all my clients during the week. It went up in the bulletin board in the office. And then on um, Wednesdays, I would cruise over to the number one radio station in town, number one morning show, soft rock show, uh, to do three minute interview on that column live. And then do another three minute one um, that played Friday. And, and then once a month, 
Um, I would go out almost to Georgia, um, preview of coming attractions, mm -hmm. uh, to the NBC affiliate to be the, now you, you, I don't think you know this, that, that you're talking to the one time good morning family therapist. No, I did not yes. know that. Yes. Okay. Huh. And so my friends would ask me, you get up that early to go out there? Do you get paid for it? Uh, no. And then what are you doing that for? I said, think about it. How much would it cost to have six minutes of advertising focused exclusively on me and my practice a week at the number one radio station? Right. Oh, okay. So even then I was repurposing in text, in audio, the radio podcast mm -hmm. now, in video, TV now, what we're doing here, YouTube, all those things. So this started early on. And, you know, when I, when I started playing online, it just kind of made sense to continue it because it had worked so well for me. Um, and so all of those principles that worked really well offline work a thousand times better online. Agreed. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that I think that a lot of people don't understand is that Uh oh, I just lost your audio. I muted myself by accident. You Thank go. you, sir. Um, All I heard was one of yep. the things I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I, I hit the button. Hit the it button. Was not well, thinking. It was a well timed. It's it's one of those things that I'm trying to like you know manipulate all these different uh, pieces and move things I, around and uh, you know hit the pain, I, I zigged when I should have zagged. You know, I hit, hit that button. But anyway, so one of the things that you know when you're talking about this this concept is that you basically were taking one piece of content going and using another medium to promote that piece of content to basically promote your business. And exactly. you're, you're taking the same thing and you're basically threading it through a variety of different pieces. Exactly right. Yeah. And that's, that's a huge concept because one of the things that people have to get their arms around is that creating content is, is a concept, but it's not a medium. You know, you hear about people all the exactly time right. talking about creating video. Video is the next big thing. Yeah, okay, well, that's great. Video is the next big thing. But when it sits on YouTube, it's up to YouTube to decide who's going to see it. Right. You don't have a way of controlling that. If you put it up on Facebook, Facebook controls who sees it. If exactly. you put it up on LinkedIn, LinkedIn controls who sees it. So, you know, one of the things that you have to do is you have to figure out how can I control the narrative with this? What are the best ways that I could do it? Now, I'm not saying don't put things on YouTube, don't th put things on Facebook and LinkedIn and all these other things, but what else can you do with it? So an example of that is these LinkedIn Lives. I created a, I have a website called liforsales.com. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking the YouTube link and I'm basically adding those videos to that page. So not only are they sitting on YouTube and not only are they replays on LinkedIn Live, but they're sitting on my website. So if I want to direct people to get to them, I could say, right. hey, if you want to watch the replay, Jeff was on a few weeks ago, a month ago. And so if you want to watch the first time that we talk because you're enjoying this, go back to that page and go and look at it. It's all on your property. Right, exactly. Which makes a big difference. And then you can take it and, and make direct income with it because I think you'll love this story. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a software that's still out there. I checked it out recently. It's not ClickBank like for affiliates. It's called ClickBook. And yep. what it will take is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And imagine turning it on its side and folding it into a booklet mm -hmm. and it'll print the words out that way. Okay. So I discovered this back in the mid 90s, right? Mm -hmm. um, to tell you how long ago this was, my email address was CompuServe. Okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and so I would take a, by about between five and seven columns on the same topic and bundle them into one document and then put it in click book. And <laughs> it was so crazy. Um, people would, people would write letters about the column and then, um, eventually start emailing. And so I kept the database and I mailed them a teeny little newsletter five days a week on different things. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom, I mentioned that if they sent me $5, I would send them this booklet. Right. And, and Brian, man, I thought I was in hog heaven. I was getting $5 bills in the mail. Wow. <laughs> it's like, Whoa, scale this up. Right. 
Uh, and then those same booklets I would take when I went to go do talks mm-hmm. in public, um, I would sell them at, at, um, at talks. The craziest thing I ever did, this is down in Tampa. I had taken my, my, my list articles like universal laws and mistakes and tips and stuff and gone to Office Depot and got some of that designer paper mm-hmm. and just printed that list on that paper. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I just, let me, let me try this, right? Um, I did a talk on stress, um, finally got out of the room and my table was backed up because all these people were buying these little um, mini posters for a buck. And I'm like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, So really repurposing first, it's for promoting yourself. Second, it's for getting engagement, bringing people in like webinars, live casts like this. Okay. And then third, it's for profit turning it into books and booklets like we do with the books. Um, goodness, courses, e-courses, um, paid videos, paid webinars, paid talks. Uh, and the beautiful thing about this that, that I really want everybody to get, because I can hear you all out there going, yeah, but you guys are, are one of those guys. I can't do this. Uh, Brian and I couldn't be more regular guy. Um, and so, yeah, you can do this. And, I just made it super easy for you because every other model I see out there, Brian, when people get the, get the product creation, you start over with the product. You don't mm-hmm. do that in my model. You go grab the content you've already created and you expand it or you bundle it. Um, a three tips article could become a three chapter book, ebook. A three tips article could become a three module course. Mm-hmm. Okay? Same content. And like you just said a moment ago, simply delivered in a different medium. And and that's one of the things. So, so there's two things I want to talk about with this and and we've talked about it before. And first and foremost, my nickname is captain typo. That's, (laughs) that's what I do. Um, I suck at writing. You know, when I first wrote my first book, um, you know, I, I I can hear my dad because my dad wasn't around to see it, but I could hear him saying, it's like, you're writing a book. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> you know? That. And it's like, but the way I wrote the first book is what I did is I went back through a bunch of blog articles that I did. And I just started pulling them out and saying, okay, this this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. And then I laid them out and said, okay, this is going to make sense if I sequence it this way. Exactly and right. then what I had to do is kind of fill in some of the gaps. And so I sequenced that original content and then I, I turned it in. And I went and filled in the gaps and I wrote a book. Now, when I wrote that first book, it was a disaster. And the reason it was a disaster because <laughs> I typed it up and I handed it over to an editor. And I thought the editor was going to proofread the book and she was going like to fix it. The editor was going to edit it and stuff? Right. Well, she edited the book. She was really, really good at it. But I didn't realize at the time that an editor is not a proofreader. An uh, editor is there okay. to look at the context of how it flows from beginning uh, to end and does chapter that's one and distinction. Yes. And chapter seven, does chapter seven flow from chapter one or is chapter one and seven the exact same thing with just a different piece of bacon on it? You know, <laughs> um, so, no, nice. you know, that's what the editor was supposed to do. So I did right. hire a proofreader at the end. I hired an indexer and all these other things. And the proofreader didn't do a good job and missed a whole bunch of stuff. So when my book came out, I mean, I had a guy just say, you know, dude, do you realize how many typos you have in here? And then the cool thing about it was, is people started reading the book and they started sending me, hey, I found a mistake on page 214. And I found a mistake here and I found a mistake. And people were just sending me emails with these mistakes that they found. And what I realized is that all of a sudden the crowd was, I was crowdsourcing my reading. Yeah, they're your last line of editors. Right, exactly. So then I went back to the (laughs) original. Yeah, I went back to the manuscript and I started plugging, you know, fixing those things. And I put it back up on Amazon so that, you know, the future books, you know, I didn't call it version two. I just basically reloaded, you know, the corrected stuff. And, you know. And then what I realized was, is that, okay, you know, from that point forward, before I publish a book, I'm just going to send out to a bunch of people, get it to read them and say, hey, tell me what you think. And by the way, if you find any mistakes, let me know. So now all of a sudden I've learned how to crowdsource my proofreading. Right. That's brilliant. Thank you. So then then the next thing that I did was book two. It was a combination of a bunch of blog posts. That was Bacon Bits. That was a little small, you know, one that's out there. And if you want to check those out, it's at notaboutyou.com. You can see all the books. 
Book three, I finally figured out I suck at writing, but I'm really, really good at interviewing. You know, that's one of my superpowers. And yep, really I'll talk about, one. remind me to talk about something called icky guy a little later. I'm not talking about icky you. Guy. You're not, yeah, you're not an icky guy. You're not an icky guy in any way, shape, I'm or form. I'm writing this down. This is important stuff. Yeah, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a little while. But then what I figured out was is, you know, one of my superpowers is interviewing. Because I do the podcast, and I love talking to people. This is one of the right. things that really, you know, gets my juices flowing and things like that. Got and it. then what I said to myself is, "Hey, if I can interview people and have that transcribed and turned into, you know, podcast show notes, why can't I just read in what I'm thinking and turn that into a book?" So the third book that I did, I read the whole thing in on my microphone. I sent it out and got it transcribed, and now all of a sudden, I've got a ton of content sitting here that I just read in that I didn't have to write. Exactly, Brian, and that, that's brilliant. And a couple of things about that, we've had similar mm -hmm. experiences, but one side note, even as we speak right now on this talk, um, Rev is uh, transcribing my most recent webinar. Mm -hmm. 75 minute webinar is becoming a great article, which will later on become a great ebook, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I, I totally get that part about not being able to write. I remember once I got the column and it spread, a lot of people stayed in town because they fell in love with, with Tallahassee and FSU. So that there's more therapists than cab drivers in Tallahassee. <laughs> Places teeming with mental health. Um, but, you know, the, all these doctoral, Dr. So-and-so and Dr. So-and-so would find out that not only am I writing a column for the newspaper, not only is it filling my practice and giving me a waiting list and filling other people's trap practices, they're paying me to do it. And all these doctoral people would just look at me and go, but you can't write. And I said, yeah, you're right. I still couldn't write academically if you held a gun to my head, but here's the two things I can do. And this is what I discovered about doing the column um, when I first started doing it, because everybody that had it before me wrote, you know, incredibly interesting stuff like, what is depression? You know, what is anxiety? Like, oh, can't wait to read that. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, because I wrote about what was going on in my office, mm -hmm. the titles became better. Um, I would always suggest a title, but the, the paper would make them different, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, one of the best ones I ever came up with, I wrote an article about how couples get together and they're attracted to things in each other. And then later on, those same things that attracted each other can become irritants, right? Yep. So the paper's title was Traits That Made Your Mate Great Become Traits That Great. Oh, I love that. Isn't that great? I yeah. love it, man. It's like, that's, that's out of the park. I got, that, I got that book in the wings somewhere. Okay. And so what I discovered by doing that, Brian, is I could do, like I said, two things. First one was in two parts. I could talk, I could write about the unique approach I took to problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I could write about the unique solutions I brought to problems. And that's not a gift unique to me. Many, many people can do that okay? or, or talk about it like you do, or they can learn how to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's thing one with making that transition. Because I, I, I don't even talk about writing. I talk about creating. It's content creation, not content writing, folks. Um, because, Brian, one of my, my fun quotes lately is, content is everything. And everything is content. And if everything is content, then you can create anything. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah, awesome. it's true. It's true. And the second thing that helps me and helps my students for the last 15 years are profitable content creation templates. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I talk about templatizing your enterprise. And if I do it more than once or if a student does it more than once, we turn it into a template. Um, and, and so we talked before about chunk templates, I think, um, chunk templates are templates that give you a chunk of information, like three mistakes, three myths, five tips, um, seven, um, warning signs, mm -hmm. five barriers, that kind of stuff. Okay. And so you're able to create in small chunks one after another. Right. Right. And so that makes the creation that much easier. It also lends to repurposing to promote you. Because then you can take one tip and put it somewhere, right? Exactly. And you can break it out. And I've got, um, you know, something in the B2B side to talk about that. But keep going. Okay. And then the second thing you can do with it 
um, to really create multiple streams of income quite easily mm -hmm. is you take that same chunk content. Okay. Let's say you put together a five tip article. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I talk about articles and columns. When we talk content though, folks, it's everything. It's audio, video, memes, infographics, t-shirts, you know, side of a van, whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, and then you take it and you turn it into products that five tip um, article can then become a five module course. Okay. And so you just take each module and you do a video and you do it live. That's why I teach people to, to get paid to create their courses. Um, you add a transcript, you add a checklist, you add maybe a template, a Q and a, and there you've got a whole module. Do that four more times on the front, on the front end, put a get started here um, module that's all about pre-training and, you know, some things to get them involved. And on the end, put um, a putting it all together module that's basically post-training, wrapping it up, making sure they've got this stuff working for them, and then offering the next steps. Mm -hmm. There you go. And I love that whole model of just, you know, taking taking something you have pre-existing and then kind of building upon it. And, and like I said, as I start to create content now, now I built... Um, from what you've taught me, I've actually taken that and turned it into a B2B business. And one of the things that we're doing is you start with um, what is the highest level thing that you can create and break it down. And oh, so thank you. So the highest level thing that we found that has gotten the most success for the B2B world. OK, this is business to business, talking to people that right. are. You know, they're looking to solve problems. What Mark S. A. Smith, who's been on here a few times, and he said, you know, the biggest difference between consumer-based marketing and B2B marketing is if you make a mistake in a consumer-based platform, and let's say, you know, me as a husband buy something my wife doesn't like, I sleep on the couch. You know, if you make a mistake in the B2B world, you don't have a couch to sleep on because you're homeless because you can't you lost That's your job. Good you example. know, I yeah. Like so, you know, it's a bigger, it's a much bigger um you know, responsibility in a lot of ways because people also, are still a different arena, very different arena. Right, exactly. But the concepts of what you do and what we do in those two arenas are no different. It's just the yep. way that you present the material. It's, it's right. what is what's in the mind of the people that you're trying to communicate with. Right. You you're know. so right, Brian, because we did we did a workshop here for businesses once. Mm hmm. And, and somebody told me after my after I did my presentation, they said, Jeff, you did a fantastic presentation for an internet marketing conference. <laughs> yeah, that's very <laughs> for true. For a business conference, that sucked. I went, okay, ouch, I, my ego can take it. <laughs> what, what, what needs to change? You know, and, and when they made that clear, it was crystal clear. Oh, okay, I get it. Can I, can I go back on stage? Can I yeah, right. It? Yeah, can I do it again? <laughs> Yeah, and it's very, it's very, very true. So what we've done is we've looked at, okay, what is the highest level form that we can do? And one of the things that we found is, you know, webinars are great, you know, but the problem is most people, especially nowadays, don't have the time, A, and B, you know, there is so much, they're Zoomed out, you know, yep. they, they everything is Zoom meetings. And so, you know, like I want to sit down for another hour and watch, you know, a yeah. webinar. And listen to people ask, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Right, exactly, yeah. Um, but so, but the thing is, is nothing, you don't necessarily have to have a thousand people on your webinar like you do in the, in the content creation world or in the internet marketing world. The only way they make money is if they get a thousand people in there and then 300 people will show up and then there's 300 people, 10% of them will buy and you'll sell 30 things at whether it's a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, depending on what it is. I mean, yeah, there's a there formula. Go. Those you know, are that, good numbers. Yeah. And that all works well. You know, so if you could sell, if you get, you know, 300 people in, 30 people buy at a hundred bucks a pop, you're making $3,000 on a webinar, which is a good webinar. And then you take your content course and sell it. You know, that's cool. That's, that's the consumer side of things. In the B2B side, we don't care how many people show up. We just want to record the content. And then that content Ooh. ends up going on to their website as a replay. They get more traffic on the replays because it is something that is getting attraction based on the title and based on the topic when people need it. Because that's never a great explanation of it. That really is, Brian. Good job. Thank you. So that's one of the reasons why the webinar being recorded is so important because people need different things at different times. You know, it's not like you've got this big audience out there. It could be just 10 people that need it. And, you know, somebody needs it this month. Somebody needs it next month. So but sitting out there and re 
repurposing it and letting people know it's there is really important. So what do you do from there? Okay, the next thing that we do is we take that webinar and we have it transcribed and we turn it into an ebook. All right. So you can listen, you know, I'll have a writer actually listen to the webinar and, and get the content out of the webinar. And we have transcribed and rev. And then they take that and they write it into an ebook. And as you said, the ebook usually has four or five chapters, right? So now you've got five blog posts that you can create from that ebook. And one of the things we learned about an ebook is same thing with webinar. People go, they see the ebook, they download the ebook, and you know what happens? It sits in their inbox, they never touch it. Yep. All right. So never now, your computer forever and ever. I'm in. Exactly. So then what we do is we take those blogs and we share that content on social media. We'll put it up on LinkedIn. We'll put it up on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever it is, and just say, hey, here's a concept, you know, micro concept of the bigger picture that you may be interested in. You know, it could be something is uh, there's a new technology. We just did a webinar on this week. It's temperature sensors. All right. And what the temperature sensors do is they um, record the temperature of a product from start to finish um, in its oh, transportation. Yeah, so wow, for it, amazing. two examples of that is one could be food, one could be pharmaceuticals. So think about what's happening with you know, the delivery of uh, Moderna and the other ones that need to be at a certain temperature in order to stay. These sensors will fit in the box and it constantly records the information then sends it out to a web monitor and you can get it via cellular you can get it you know online so wow. maybe you know so you do one chapter on pharmaceuticals on the temp sensors and you do another one on the food safety side of it and so somebody that's in the food industry is going to say oh this is kind of cool and they get to that one article and they click on it and in there's a link to download the ebook right so now all of a sudden it's like, hey, that's cool. Let me find out more about this technology because you've gotten that one small piece that interests them and drags them into it. Then the next one is, so they download the ebook and the same thing happens. They go and they download the ebook. It sits in their inbox. So what do you do? When somebody downloads ebook, generally speaking, you collect their name and address, right? Your, their name and their, their email address. So what you do is you immediately add them to a drip marketing campaign. Well, guess what? The drip marketing campaign is written off of the ebook chapters. So, and it aligns with the blogs. So it says, hey, if you download this ebook, we've got a blog that talks about, you know, the medical, um, the, the medical and pharmaceutical use of temperature sensors. So go check out this blog. And on the blog, it, there's a link to the ebook, but also on that email drip, there's a link that says, hey, if you download the ebook, re-download it now. And so if it gets Mark. them- oh, that's smart. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're basically creating a content ecosystem around it. So you're reminding people that they download the ebook. If they're not interested at the time they downloaded it, they may be interested at a later time because you're grabbing all these micro pieces and you're using the drip email to say, here is all the content inside the ebook. This is what is going to work for you. That ecosystem has just been amazing. And so with that ecosystem, let's say you've got 47 pieces in it. Okay. I'm just picking a number. Sure. And now, you know, Mr. Corporate CEO guy is looking at you and another person and you've got 47 pieces of content on one topic out there times a hundred topics. And this other guy wrote a book about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Who's he going to hire? The guy that's doing the most current stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's seen everywhere because that screams credibility that screams expertise without you having to say, hey, I'm a great big expert. Right. Well, and anytime you're in business and this kind of stuff, it's not about you anyways. It's about them. It's what does it right. do for them? What, how does it make their job easier? How does it save money? That's always the focus of all of this stuff, you know? And so so that's, that's the concept of, uh, you know, from a B2B standpoint of taking your repurposing all the way from a webinar down to email drips that creates a, a, basically an ecosystem around your content. And, and the I whole love that, Brian. goal I really of love that. all of that stuff is to communicate with a salesperson. Mm -hmm. I was on a, I was on a call the other day and I know I'm doing, I'm doing way too much talking on this one, but I'm no, excited. I, I love what you're talking about and I've got a good analogy coming up for it too. Thank you. Okay. So I, I was on a call with another guy who's a sales, um, he's a sales coach. You know, that's what he does. He basically is a, 
a fractional CSO, you know, That's my mom tell her I'm busy. Yeah, exactly. No, they're calling about my car warranty. I know that. Um, <laughs> one thing I forgot to do is unplug the phone because it's either that or do for it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but he said, he said, you know, somebody said that when we were talking in a group, they say, you know, you and Brian are kind of aligned in what you do. You know, you're a sales guy, you know, he's a marketing guy. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, the other guy is the engine. He is the piston that drives the engine. Okay. I'm the spark plug that makes a piston go up and down. Nice. I like that. Thank I you. like that. And, and the whole ecosystem thing reminds me of both my sons, John and Caleb, they grew up on Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. right? especially SpongeBob. Okay? Oh, I love SpongeBob. Oh yeah. Great. It's great adult humor actually, but most people miss it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even know if it's still there in Orlando. And there's, I think there's one in Texas and one in California, but the Nickelodeon um, hotel and resort, hey, um, you go there and you you can pick out your SpongeBob room or whatever themed room you want. Mm -hmm. okay? And there's two pools on site, not pools, water parks on site. Okay, so you know you really the only thing we left for was to go swim with dolphins at SeaWorld. Um, the, one of the two times we went, um, the, the centerpiece of every um, water park is this great big giant bucket in the air. Mm -hmm. And if, when it fills with water, it dumps on the people below. And if your bathing suit is not secure, <laughs> <laughs> it, can, it can become a problem. Um, but one day we spent like a week there one time and we're walking, we're doing everything there is in this place. And that big giant bucket was a metaphor, mm -hmm. Brian, because throughout the place, every 10 feet, there was another bucket that you could put your money into. Oh, yeah. You know, character breakfast and character pictures and movies and events and this and that. And, you know, people parked their cars and never left for a week, but probably ended up spending a whole lot more if they had traveled all around. Uh, and I thought, I want to do a business like that, you know, that has all these buckets that people are enjoying that mm -hmm. help people. Right. Um, but it's multiple places for people to put their money. Right. And that, and that's the one thing about, you know, creating all this content is it has multiple purposes. You know, it's like I said, with my book, my book, any one of them, you know, it gets me $10 on Amazon. All right. If I'm at in, in, in a conference and I'm selling them, I could sell 25 or a hundred books at a time, yep. you know? So if I sell 25 books at a conference, I'm making $250, you know, uh, or $2,500, whatever it is, you know, depending yeah. on what I'm doing. Um, I'm terrible with math in the morning. And, I, and whenever I do these Saturday morning things, I always like, yeah, I, 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 never I need a calculator. To, I, I gave up <laughs> trying to do math live a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I was I was going to be a surgeon growing up because I, I loved MASH. Mm -hmm. you know? And then in 11th grade, I took chemistry. Mm -hmm. I mean, math I was good at, but when they added the alphabet, mm -hmm. I, was, I was done. So probably saved a whole lot of lives. <laughs> well, now I understand why your Trapper John story, if anybody hasn't heard it, they need to go back and listen to the other LinkedIn live. Um, your Trapper John story is a very relevant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. fun story. Yeah, that's a great story, yeah. So, um, so yeah, this, this whole concept of having, you know, a book, having webinars, having, you know, drip sequences and, 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 you know, in the B2B world, it's, it's similar in the way that having content in a lot of different places will create different streams. But the key thing is, is that, you know, it's like one customer is interested in purchasing supplies. Another uh, customer is interested in purchasing repairs. Another customer is interested in purchasing new gear, upgrading their gear. Another customer may be interested in a complete ecosystem, you know? And the thing is by having these multiple streams of income, you never know when you're going to hit the right person at the right time to generate oh, that absolutely. conversation. Like our mutual friend, Mike Stewart, okay? mm -hmm. trying to get him to read something. Just, just don't, okay? Because <laughs> you know he—that's why he's the audio and video guy, right? Right. And now he's gone back into audio, working with um, with um, Nashville artists and stuff. Um, but if you give it to him in video or audio, mm -hmm. he'll 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 devour it, okay? By the same token, there's I know people that will never watch a video online, mm -hmm. but they'll read the heck out of a transcript, mark it up, underline it, take it with them. Um, you know, and so when you're doing that, multiple delivery systems of text, audio, video, and then 
micro delivery systems of ebook, um, mini poster, webinar, uh, podcast, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera. You know, there's, you're going to, you, you open up the world of people that will find your stuff so greatly that you're going to pretty much blanket your, your niche. Right. And that's exactly, I mean, I've talked about my system numerous times of what I do every single week. Everybody says, when the heck do you find time to sleep? And that's because I do two podcasts a week. I do a blog. I do an email drip. I do LinkedIn lives. I do all of these things. Um, but the bottom line is when I record my podcast, which is only a whopping 10 minutes, all right, 10 minutes, I, I basically go into Evernote and I write out, okay, what do I want to say? And it usually starts with a, a, a title. And I usually think of the title when I'm walking my dog. So what I do is I have, you know, uh, I record the title on my watch. I come back, I put the title into Evernote, and then I write a blog or a podcast around that topic. All right. And the one, probably the best one that I've had come out recently that got the most attention is why you want to be part of the cancel culture. And the reason and what it is, it's calling it's talking about canceling your subscriptions to programs that you're not using. Oh, canceling, I love that. Thank you. It's how to make more money by canceling things you're not using. That's good, Brian. Thank you. So but that was what I was thinking about when I was walking my dog. It's like all this talk about cancel culture. How do I turn it into something? It's like, oh, cancel subscriptions to things you're not using. And the reason that was so relevant is because I got subscribed to a couple of LinkedIn or excuse me, WordPress plugins that I bought last year. They didn't realize that when I bought them, they were subscriptions on an annual basis. And yeah. I didn't even think about it, you know, and all yeah. of a sudden it's like, I'm getting dinged 50 bucks here, 80 bucks there, 120 bucks there. One of, the uh, one of the subscriptions I have, which I like, and I pay for $600 a year for a plugin. Whew. Yeah. But so that's where the concept came from. So then, you know, I record it and then I send it to Rev and now I turn it into a, um, a blog. And then I have a VA who goes through and proofreads the blog because I'm Captain Typo. I suck at that. So she proofread proofreads it, sets it up, publishes it for me every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock like clockwork. And then I have an expert interview that I do, like you, you know, on the podcast and you've been on the Bacon Podcast numerous times. And so then I do that. Then all I do is I send that same virtual assistant two pictures, your picture and the picture I used in the podcast, and she creates an email for me that goes out Thursday. And so now I've got a podcast, a blog, a podcast, an email every single week. And literally, if it takes me an hour to do all of that stuff, it's insane. I mean, it, that's how much time it takes. So that repurposing and putting things out there in audio and video and print and, you know, all of those things at the same time are huge. Yeah, you build a system around it and you got it made. I remember one time on a webinar, somebody saying in the chat, this webinar was a was an article of yours, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. <laughs> then they said, you can do that. I said, yep. Mm -hmm. And then smartly they said, will you show me how? Yep. Yep. Hey, that's got them calling right now to say, hey, show, can you remind me how you did that? <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's actually my, my son was texting. I got a good son. He wants to know if I want him to go by the grocery store. Um, but, um, that was also a band called Switchfoot with one of their songs on there. I love it. Um, so anyway, yeah. And so like right now, um, next week I'm doing a two day boot camp mm -hmm. all about creating profitable courses. Right. Right. And part of it's going to be taking the content you already have and expanding it. Okay. Now I, I mentioned earlier, I've got a, um, transcript, um, uh, being transcribed by Rev right now, even as we speak, it's already set up on Medium. The YouTube, the webinar has been uploaded to YouTube. It's a YouTube video. That YouTube video is already in Medium, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when I get the transcript back, I'll put it over there, tweak it a little bit, and now I've got a multimedia piece of content for everybody. Um, it's for free, but I could certainly charge for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I talk with a lot of people about creating their first course or their first product. And, and that's all they can think about is the first one. But I'm thinking, you know, 10 products down the line for them where they build their, their product ecosystem, to use mm -hmm. your terms, um, and, and really build an a info product empire around it. Right. And, you know, think now, take it from two perspectives, too. You know, you can create courses that you can sell. Right. Or you can create courses that sell you. Ooh, say that again for the for the folks. Yeah, you can create courses that sell, 
or you can create courses that sell you. Wow, that's huge. That's and that, huge. yeah. Can you say more about that? I can, yeah. And this goes back <laughs> to the, the table. I'm going to interview you. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Well, that's the whole point of this is just to have fun and kind of discuss, you know, topics. So I'll go back to that concept of icky guy. Okay. So I one of the things that I've learned this year, and I, I've been talking about a lot, is Blinkist. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but Blinkist is a um, basically it's Cliff Notes of audiobooks. Okay. So it, basically, any book that you would read. And the, the reason I got it at the beginning is because I wanted to go back and listen to books that I've, I've loved, you know, and just see, is it still relevant? Because if you read a book five years ago and you read a book now, what you're going to see in that book is going to be something completely different because you are going to change, right? That's why so, I've read my favorite books multiple times. Yeah, I have too, you know, and there's certain books that I can consider to be cornerstones in my business. And one of them is the four hour work week. And the other one is the E-Myth Revisited. And the other one is the Go-Giver and, you know, over and over and over. And, uh, and how see, do we knowing, friend- knowing those three books, that's perfect. That makes perfect sense for you because mm-hmm. you've implemented all three of those a million times over. Yeah. And how to win friends and influence people and think and grow rich. And, you know, all of these books that you are just kind of like, you know, I've listened to think and grow rich probably 15 times in my lifetime, you know, or read 15 times listener or whatever. And I'm an audiobook guy. I love audiobooks because it's just, I'm an auditory learner. That's the way right. I learn. There you go. Right. So, um, so Blinkist does these 15 minute, um, basically summaries of books and it does it what's called blink. So it'll do in five blinks, seven blinks, 10 blinks, whatever it is, it takes all the core concepts and just lays it out for you. But the cool thing about it is when you're done with that audiobook. So say you go listen to think and grow rich. All right. Then it's going to jump into a Jack Canfield book about, you know, having a positive mental attitude. And uh, then it's going to jump into another one about mindset. And then it got to this one book, that was uh by and the thing about it is it leads you into books you'd never buy or never listen to and so there was this one book about um you know mindset from a um a hindu standpoint and it, and then it went off into this thing called ikigai which is a japanese mindset standpoint and ikigai is a japanese word for purpose kind of sort of and what ikigai does and i wrote i did a blog about this and i did a podcast about it what it does is there are people in okinawa they are all centurions 100 100 years old and what they found is this concept and how it works and there you you can go online and look up ikigai it's i-k-i-g-a-i okay is how it's spelled and you go on and you'll find a venn diagram there are four parts to it and it is number one what do you love right Number two, what are you good at? Number three, what does the world need? And number four is what can you get paid for? And the wow. people and the people that have figured this out have this centerpiece built around their entire life with all four of those intersecting. So I sat down and did the exercise myself. And the two things I'm really, really good at, okay? Number one, or what do I love? The two things I love is technology and teaching. Those are the two things I, I've learned over the years. Those are the things I love. What am I good at? What I'm really good is interviewing and making the complex simple. Those are the two things I'm really Mm -hmm. good at, okay? So take those two things and intersect them. And then what does the world need more of? And I just said better. Better something, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then the final piece is how can you get paid for this? And the way I get paid for is through my time, you know, or through my knowledge and experience. Is there a book for this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's books on it. Yeah. Okay. And of course, it went to a book on Ikigai. And if you just look up Ikigai, you'll find it. There's books on it. Yeah. Okay. I will definitely do that because I am I love this concept. I do too. And I, yeah, I totally fell in love with it. So what, but what I'm trying to say with this for the audience and, and, you know, for, for the people that follow you who are going to watch this is if you can take all of those things, you, in the center is your course. It's, it's what you love, what you, you know, what you love, what you're good at, what can you make better? And then the final piece is how can you get paid for it? Right. And so you can eat. Awesome. Thank you. And you can either get paid by selling the course directly, or you can get paid by sharing what you love and then getting people to purchase whatever it is, whatever it is you're selling, your time, your knowledge, you know, that's the key thing. But if you take those things and blend them together, that's what your course should be about. See, I'm thinking real macro on that. Mm-hmm. If, if the more people on the planet that do that, 
the better off everything's going to be. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you know, I, 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 I'm, I, I have in mind a situation that happened not far from here at a, at a big outdoor mall that everybody considers totally safe. But there was a road rage incident inside the parking area mm -hmm. and it started with yelling and both guys got out of their car, you know, first mistake. Right. Right. And the other one, one stabbed the other, you know, so two lives are ruined. Right. You know? And all the people that, um, you know, they, they interact with, um, over something stupid, you know? Right. And, and I, I just, something like what you're talking about, I think it can change the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm no, I excited about it. I agree a hundred percent. And, you know, but I, again, when people start thinking about content, what can I write about? What can I do? I mean, we've given so many different ideas about walking your dog and just literally yeah. just, you know, talking into your watch, you yeah. know, coming up with a basic concept and then kind of building upon that. I mean, the, the bottom line is content is life and life is content. Ooh, that's a write down. Thank you. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, one, one of the most popular blogs I wrote last year was the one is like, I almost died and how social media helped. You know, when I had sepsis. I remember that one. Yeah. And it was all about how the neighbors came over and were shoveling my driveway. And I was just standing there crying, realizing, oh, my God, there are people out there that give a damn, you know. I so get that. Yeah. I so get that. But this, that was life. This watch right here that you were showing. Yeah. Okay, this was a gift. Okay. Back before um, Thanksgiving, I ran into this nasty thing called AFib. Mm -hmm. um, and it was scary. Um, but it, we got it under control and I'm fine now. Um, but the guys in my men's group. Mm-hmm all went on, went in and presented me with this watch that allows you to check your EKG. Yep. Your ECG anytime you want. And I mean, I was totally stunned in our group. And, and like you said, I'm sitting there with tears in my eyes going, I, I don't know that I can speak right now. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's just amazing when people show that kind of caring, you know, and, and just look out for their brother, their sister, anything like that. Speaking of brothers and sisters, just so you know, uh, I'm not sure if you saw in the comments, but Kathleen Gage joined us um, well, hello, quite a Kathleen. while ago. Yeah, she jumped in a while ago. That's cool. You know, she was one of the ones when I first started doing, um, you know, guest, guest things like this, right? Mm -hmm. I did one with her and she sent me. I think it was, we were both dog people. She sent me this little dog figurine thing. Oh, yeah. Thought, what a nice touch, you know, because she was the only one that had done that until then, I thought. And look at me. 11 years later, I remember this, and I'm telling oh, yeah. the story. So there you go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she so I'll, be, I'll be looking for my gift, Brian. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> where's your bacon mug, brother? <laughs> you got a personalized bacon mug somewhere. Yeah, uh, hang on a minute. Hang on yep. a minute. <laughs> You don't come on the bacon podcast without getting a gift. Since I don't drink coffee. Yeah, there, hey, it's all, it's all good. There you yeah. go. And it's over in my windowsill. <laughs> and I, I, can't, I can't see the lake without seeing this. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It absolutely is. So, um, but, um, and Kathleen, the same way. I mean, we connected on dogs. She had her dog that she rescued, Delaney. I rescued Buddy Guy. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's those, that, again, that's life. You know, that's have a contact. triangle here. Right. Ex that. Exactly. And uh, Jeff asked a question, too. He said, what's the difference between a blog and just posting video on your website or pages? You want to talk about that? Sure. Um, you can post the same thing, just in different forms. A blog traditionally is a written form. Um, a video of the exact same thing. You can call it a, a vlog if you want. It's just a video. Like um, on Medium, um, once I get my transcript back, I'll have both the, um, the video version of the webinar and the written version. So you can do either, you can do both. Um, it's not so much what the difference is as it is who's it reaching. Right. Yeah, I always tell people there are three types of learners in the world. There's auditory, there's visual, and then there's tactile. Yep. And so the key thing is, is if you can make something that reaches all three of those audiences, you have the marketing trifecta. Yeah. And the, and the, oh, absolutely. And the quickest way to discover what somebody is, is listen to them. Okay. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That doesn't feel good. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. This is They're, not rocket science. Yeah. But that's your psychologist side of things yeah. coming out on you. you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah but I, I listen to people and and what I was taught in, in engaging people and bonding with people is you listen to their modality mm -hmm. and then you speak in that. Yeah, that's awesome. It may not be yours, but um, if you speak in theirs, you're going to have a lot more influence mm -hmm. in, in an ethical way with that person. Yeah, and influence influ in my in my view of the world, influence leads to help. Influence mm -hmm. allows you to help people. Okay, um, you know nobody cares about um, your opinion; they care about you know what you do, right? Right. Or as we say in the world of online marketing, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we've got about five minutes left and um, I wanted to give you a little bit of time to talk about, you know, what you've got coming up. And also I did not prepare a slide so you can tell people what your link is. That's um, okay. This is an easy link. Okay. Um, I alluded to it before. Um, the first of the year, we started doing two day boot camps online, Brian. Mm -hmm. and, and using my templates and then walking people through to get an outcome. The first one was perfectly profitable content. Mm -hmm. um, the second one was uh, a list building bootcamp. And this one coming up is all about um, creating a profitable course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not just a product, but a course. And I also teach you how to get paid to do it, how, how to eagerly get your customers to pay you to create it. Um, and we're going to spend two days doing that um, at the, uh, at the end of the week and you can learn all about it at profitable course bootcamp profitable course bootcamp and make sure you tell me that you came from brian so we can all celebrate together and um you're going to walk away with uh, an idea a title and a launch all done and ready to go okay um and then there's some upgrades where you can do more done with you stuff or even done for you stuff. Um, but check it out at ProfitableCourseBootCamp.com. And uh, we'll have a good time together, I promise. There we go. Uh, I think I've got the banner right there. Let's see if this is going to show. Um, <laughs> is that good? Did I spell it Man, right? Man, look at that guy. In, in real live internet creation and marketing, Right on the show, Brian. Exactly, man. Right you know, down you, there, folks. Look at that. You, you gotta make you gotta make it happen quick, you know. So <laughs> and so I also want to um, let people know that if you want to watch any of this again or any replays of Jeff's previous or any other guests, go to liforsales.com forward slash it's a long one, bacon and coffee. LinkedIn lives. But if you just go to liforsales.com, you'll see the link at the top of the page for the replays. Smart. So those are all there. And so with that being said, we got about three minutes left. Any any final words or any wisdom that you want to bestow uh, upon our audience? This is coming from the guy that didn't finish his PhD because he couldn't write. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can do this, folks. Okay, There are more people in the world waiting to hear your message who can only hear it from you mm -hmm. than you can ever get to in your lifetime. And if you stumble over your words the first time, fine. Okay. Your, your worst, your first one will probably be your worst one. Think okay? of my first book, the one that had all those typos in it. Yeah. There. Yeah. And, and what you did that was brilliant is you got it done and out of the way that's behind you. You mm -hmm. played with it and fixed it. But now what book, how many books are you on now? Five. Okay. So what a lot of people would have done is, well, God, I'm so embarrassed. I did so many typos. I'm never doing this again. And, you know, that's probably five out of 50 you'll do, right? Mm -hmm. right. You can do this, folks. You have a message inside you that the world needs. And not only do you have a right to get it out there, if it helps someone else, and I'm talking about better relationship to catching more fish, okay? Not only do you have an obligation to get it out there, you've got a, um, a right to profit from it mm -hmm. do well, you know, so you can keep doing it and keep helping people. So there you go. Right. And one of the things I learned a long time ago, um, and I think this was from somebody that I met at NAMS. I'm pretty sure it was Kathy Demers, but it may not have been. But Kathy, uh, I think she said to me, because I always had a problem with sales, you know, making money. It's like I felt guilty about it for some yeah, reason. Yeah. You know, I, know. I was born and raised so Catholic. Everything puts me in a guilt trip. Um, <laughs> 
But one of the things she said to me, she says, Brian, stop thinking of dollars as dollars. She held up a dollar bill and she says, what is this? And I said, it's a buck. She goes, no, it is a certificate of appreciation. And the bottom oh, line, it. the bottom line is the more that people appreciate what you do, the more certificates they're going to give you. So stop looking at money as something that is holding you back or something that's, you know, you feel guilty about. Look at it. The more that people appreciate you, the more certificates they're going to give you. I and then with those cert that. with certificates, then you can give those certificates in other ways. You can buy lunch. You can yeah. donate to your church. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. There's but the whole all point kinds of things you can do. Yeah. And, and so I, I learned a little bit about that one. Um, mm -hmm. The counseling psychologist, because the, the problem in that situation, Brian, is you end every interaction with a with a money exchange. OK, mm -hmm. so you've got to ask a person that maybe just bared their soul with you and is still wiping tears. You know, got to write your check. Right. Right. Um, and a lot of times people would forget. And I'd be like, oh, OK, don't worry about it. Well, what I learned to say was, you know, they, they left their checkbook in the car. That's OK. I'll wait. Um, and then. I didn't like the notion of every interaction ending with that. And so what I did is I started selling monthly packages mm -hmm. once a month. Okay. And it's out of the way and you know, it's fine. You know, right. so that's a whole nother show about how to package this stuff. Well, and that's, that's what we're going to talk about next month when you come on is how to create All subscriptions right. and how to create those kind of things with your content and what to do with it and how to bundle it and how to repurpose it in other ways. So, I mean, I we've it. got so much to talk about, it. you know, can it. you believe we've been on for an hour already? I can't. It feels like five minutes. I know. Doesn't it? <laughs> and I hope it feels like five minutes to the audience too. With I think all our it, fun, crazy stories. Yeah. And I think it does. You know, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love having you on, because there's so much value that we can provide in a short period of time. And, you know, I just want people to understand that creating content does not have to be a burden. And here's here's the worst case scenario, people. If you don't feel like doing it yourself, um, you can be interviewed by somebody and they can create it for you. That's what I have all my VAs do for me. Yes. You know, so yes. there's the, there's nothing stopping you from getting your messages out there other than your own mindset. Exactly. Exactly. And that's one of the things I love changing, as you might imagine. Yes, exactly. And uh, well, thank you, sir, for coming on. This has been a blast. I my look forward pleasure. to having you, you back on next month again. Always and um, you're you're one of my repeat guests. So we're going to be here talking about all different kinds of things. I would love um, one of these times for you, maybe even to teach people a little bit about what you do inside your courses and kind of show them okay. some of the things you've done. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And as I get better at this, I'll, I'll give you the ability to share your screen and do some other things. And, and we'll That's just right. kind of turn. StreamYard does that and they do it well too. They do it very well. Yeah. I just haven't ventured into that, that plan or that game yet, but we'll get there. So, all right, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming to Bacon and Coffee. We so appreciate you and your time and your interest in all these things. And I'm going to roll this out with the Bacon and Coffee theme song. Take care, peeps. We'll see you next week.